So today we're doing paint job. So let's go. I got my primer and I was able to tape around the car as you can see using the inner crease. So I'm barely starting to put my first coat of primer. I have to hurry up because the temperature it's gonna drop pretty soon, but this side has not been done yet. Just want you to see how or where I taped it. And the sunroof, I would have opened it fully. It would have made it easier, but for whatever reason, the rails are not working for whatever reason. So that's why I'm kind of stuck doing it like this. Um, but pretty much, that's kind of how I I got it all taped out. And you can see the spots that buffed out pretty well. So shouldn't be a big deal. But I'll have to hurry up here um, and make sure I can <clears throat> get this done. I do have my mask on, so again, you have to pick a direction. Um, the first coat that I did, I went horizontally. Um, the second coat of primer, I'm going to go vertically to make sure I can cover as much area as possible. And I will finally decide when I put my paint of the direction I'm going to use and I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to put the camera down and I'll keep on doing this um, to make sure I have the whole roof covered um, with the primer and then I'll move around with the paint. So there you have it. So that's after my first can of primer. I'm about to use my second can and basically it's the same thing. I start on the wet side. I mean I start on the dry side meaning the side where I started before. And I'm going to make my way to the, the dry side. I do that half. I do it by quarter. Basically, I do that quarter. And then I do the other quarter. Come on this side, do this quarter. And then go and do the other quarter. And I just go through everything again a little bit afterwards. Just to kind of cover all the patches. I also use the, um, <laughs> uh, the little device that women have to fix their eyebrow eyelashes. Pick them out. And you can use that to kind of... I think it's a tweezer. You can use that to pick that out uh, without making too much mess and that's probably what I'm gonna do because the paint is calling out all those bugs like the smell of paint bringing them all out so it's about a can and a half of primer in it might seem like there's some over spray spot but it's not really because it's the base coat so I want to do it like this um, I'll let it sit a little bit let it cure and then I'm gonna start spray painting it um, as you can see, you can always go back and do some touch-ups. It doesn't really have to be perfect when you're doing the primer. So That is after um, me going halfway through the second can of uh, black. Um, it looks pretty good. I mean, the, it helped us settle a lot of things. The problem is, I don't know if you can see the little bugs. When you're doing it outside, your problem is you have those little mats that will come and land on the paint. Oops. And eventually... Uh, <laughs> dry out with the paint so that's the downside definitely from doing such a big job outside uh, I will recommend if it wasn't this time of the year but that's definitely been the problem here like the little spots like that uh, spots where we had our bugs you know those little mats on there but right now what I'm doing I'm just trying to you know um, it's kind of like when you spray perfume on yourself you know you got your sensitive spots and then you just kind of sprayed a little bit all over it i don't know if you're like me but you spray it and you walk through it to kind of make sure it goes everywhere you you missed the first time you know to, uh, to kind of make it look more even so that's kind of what i'm doing and that's after like i've said i've sectioned it i've done it in sections vertically first and then horizontally to make sure that the coverage is identical and now i'm just kind of you know playing around to make sure that uh the paint goes everywhere to kind of you know harmonize everything else make sure it's even make sure there's no if there was an overspray it's kind of touched up a little bit you know um, I'm not teaching you guys anything but it's kind of the same thing the distance is about the same but it requires a lot of patience if you're not patient you would jack it up and after doing this side I have to move around 
to take my little step stool here and um, walk around and take another look to see because normally you can tell if you have if it's not even you can tell because one spots are going to be drying faster than the other ones especially if they're all done at the same about the same time so that's when you kind of do this little game here to make sure you kind of get all of them moist at the same time so when they dry out you know they're all drying out right about the same time so pretty much what I'm doing here make sure you hit the corners here pretty well give yourself a lot of distance so you don't get runs because that's the danger it's not a big deal because those uh, railings the rails are gonna go right back in there so you can't really see the creases but you don't want to have runs there necessarily so give yourself some room and uh, you know just just playing around I don't know if the camera will show but it's kind of taking care of itself um, as I go again it's nothing perfect we're talking about maybe four or five cans at about ten maybe eight ten dollars a can uh, depending on where you buy them and what kind of can you buy so definitely not a a $500 <laughs> job at the paint store but I believe the results is gonna be solid so uh, I'll let it sit for a little bit and I'm gonna start applying my clear coat in a minute I'm still using the the wheel clear coat uh, just because again I'm thinking if, if it's made to resist all the chip rocks and all, all those things on the road if you can see it's dirty it's still good then it should be able to handle um, it should be able to handle our, our roof just fine so um, again it's the same can I'm using I'm getting it at, at a discounted rate um, so and and they're doing the job very well so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll start uh, applying some clear coat here so I can let it sit once and for all and uh, it should be golden so that's after been emptying my first can of clear coat I might touch it up again I'm not sure I'll let it sit for a minute and make sure it cures a little bit so I can kind of see um, now I can already see a little imperfection right there there you go the camera is going to show you the little groove right there from when we send it uh, we send it that spot so I'll go back on my word and say sometime you might actually want to use some bundle to bundle it back and kind of fill it up. I didn't believe there was that much paint on there, um, but apparently there was. So um, that's the only spot that I can see. Uh, we still have the little nut there that are kind of messing up with it, but I think it's coming up pretty well so far. So uh, I'm going to let it sit and then I want to apply another coat again as you can see I started peeling off the tape um, and I just wanted to show you guys how I peel it off um, basically what I do and you can see how I cut it almost perfectly uh, it's still wet so this is the time to take it off um, I you you start on the long side well, I start on the long side meaning I start on the side because I did a single tape through and through so I'm gonna start on this side I'm gonna take this out try to do it with one hand hopefully it comes out right but the goal is to <clears throat> remove all your little extra stickers there that you put for the wind not to blow the paper on top of your project I have one here I have one here I have another piece here and that should do so what I'm gonna do is like you're you're yanking the tape out, right? Like you're literally trying it out. And now that I got it, I'm gonna roll it like it was a curtain while pulling towards me, pulling it towards me and rolling it. Pretty much all that I do. I pull it, I roll it. Make sure it stays away from the body of the car. Uh, again the runs on the inside the line doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna get covered up with the rail so 
you want to keep on rolling and while pulling towards you. That's kind of how I did it. Uh, to get it to come out without messing with the car. Um, there. No, this is the tricky spot. Okay, right there. And here, I had a double take. So there you go. That's how I took that out. And it's going to be the same for the front. Uh, I'll try start with the single side, and I'm going to roll it out um, that way to make sure you know I didn't jack it up completely. It's not going to be perfect as far as you can see. There's still a little gap there, that's still, but. You cannot really see because the tint of the window, you know. If somebody want to pick at you, that's fine. Somebody want to pick at me, that's fine too. <laughs> but even the the body shop wouldn't do any better. Because to do better, you have to take the glass out of the car. Which, um, I, don't, I don't see the point in doing that. But basically on that note too, I'm pulling down while I'm rolling it. I'm going to go on the other side. And I hope I'm not going to jack it up as I keep on rolling it so it doesn't touch the, the top side of the car. And that's why masking it was very, very important because you want to make sure you have enough tape left down there so you can press it on top of the glass. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm not worried. Because for this, I'm just going to come peel it up the other way. And there you have it. So, um, that was one of the spots that had the, the, the rust. But you can see the, the windshield has a little poking here. So we kind of fixed that. Now the crack goes up that way and it comes down here. So it's not expanding. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this treated again. Because we did it. A couple of months ago when the car was brought in um, but I think it expanded going down so <clears throat> that's pretty much it what we have left now is the is the sunroof uh, it's gonna be a little tricky the sunroof and the antenna uh, but you want to do it when it's wet you don't want to wait until it dries out it dries out it's gonna be a mess so for this one I'm gonna need both of my hands uh, but I'll pretty much be doing the same thing I'll go ahead and I'll unmask this. I'll let the roof sit like this for a little bit before I put it back down. But uh, yeah, same thing with the antenna. I'm gonna pull the tape out, the one up top and then the one on the sides and we should be golden. All right, so there you have it. Um, again, there are a couple of spots that we'll do better when we redo the project on another vehicle or whatnot, but those are a rust spot. They still show a little bit, it's not too bad. Um, uh, there's that paint spot that I showed up top right there where it's still kind of you can see the difference a little bit um, there's nothing we can really do about that I should have checked better that's on me but overall overall I think the project came out really good uh, it's a little cold now which is why I was kind of hurrying up a little bit at the end and I hope I stopped in time so that uh, we can get this thing to kind of cure a little bit before night time and leaves and stuff. One thing I'll say is I will definitely not advise doing it outside if you have trees and stuff. Don't even do it outside. I mean, if you have to do it in the garage, do it in the garage. Uh, it's different than uh, plastic dip, definitely. Uh, I've dipped another car. I've dipped a couple of cars and it wasn't that much of a headache. Um, Again, the smell, I think it's the smell or whatever chemicals they have in the paint that smells the way it smells, that kind of attract all those gnats and insects and stuff like that that will try to come and land on your stuff. So you don't want that, you don't need that. Um, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'll put the railings back after I refinish them. And we should be golden.